Do your legs hurt when you walk, but feel better when you rest and sit down? It could be claudication, but is it neurogenic claudication from your spine or vascular claudication from your blood vessels? In this video, we'll break down the key signs and tests that professionals use to identify the cause. Now, the word claudication simply means pain, cramping, or weakness in the legs brought on by activity. This could be from vascular claudication, which is caused by poor blood flow, usually from peripheral artery disease. Or it could be caused by neurogenic claudication, which is caused by narrowing in the lumbar spine, which puts pressure on the lumbar nerves. While the symptoms of vascular and neurogenic claudication can feel similar, the mechanisms and treatment are very different. Before we move on, I just want to quickly welcome you to the Physio Channel. Hello, my name is Daniel. This is an educational video, not medical advice, but we hope you find it helpful. Moving quickly on, we're gonna look at how to tell the difference between vascular claudication and neurogenic claudication. With neurogenic claudication, it's typically triggered by walking whilst upright, whereas with vascular claudication, it's triggered by walking regardless of your posture. Therefore, neurogenic claudication can be eased by flexing forwards or sitting down. Vascular claudication can be eased simply by resting, which could mean just standing still. What this means is neurogenic claudication is posture sensitive, whereas vascular claudication is not posture sensitive. The next big difference between neurogenic and vascular claudication is the location of the pain. With neurogenic claudication, it's typically felt in the buttocks, the thighs, and the calves on both legs, whereas in vascular claudication, it's usually just felt in the calf area on both legs. Next, we can consider pulses with neurogenic claudication. The posterior tibial pulses on both legs would usually be normal, whereas with vascular claudication, as you might expect, the posterior tibial pulses on both legs would be diminished. Now, it's less easy to determine the difference based on age, but people with neurogenic claudication are usually over 60 with a history of spinal stenosis, whereas people with vascular claudication are also in the older age bracket, but have vascular risk factors in their medical history. This simple test is called the standing exertion test to help differentiate between neurogenic and vascular claudication. Simply stand tall with your lower back arched for 30 seconds. If this brings on your leg symptoms, it indicates neurogenic claudication. If it does not bring on your leg symptoms, then it's more indicative of a vascular cause. Next, we'll look at the two-stage treadmill test. Walk flat and uphill on a treadmill and observe the symptoms. Neurogenic claudication causes early onset of pain on flat walking, but may allow longer uphill walking due to spinal flexion and the change in posture. Vascular claudication typically worsens faster when walking uphill due to the increased muscular demand. So this is the next test, the bicycle test of Van Gelderen. To start, cycle upright until the claudication symptoms occur in the legs. Then lean forwards on the bike to curve the lumbar spine. And if the symptoms are caused by neurogenic claudication, this change in posture will usually relieve the symptoms. Therefore, if the symptoms are not relieved by flexing forward on the bike, then it's more indicative of vascular claudication. Just remember that not everybody with spinal stenosis on MRI scans or CT scans will actually have symptoms. That's why it's important to use the clinical presentation and other tests to determine the cause. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with anybody else you know who may find it helpful. Showing on the screen here is another video relating to spinal stenosis that you may find useful. Thanks for watching the Physio Channel. We'll see you in the next video.